Uh, but all the alumni who served on the committee, please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. And to help the program, I'd like to bring up, bring up Tom Thomas, who served with me on the whole state of selection. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. I was a DJ at WPGUFM in the uh, early 70s. I was the one accounting major who somehow fumbled his way onto the uh, FM airways. Uh, and that's the last of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> now, here I am, 30 years later, I get to do the part of the show that the Price Waterhouse guy does at the Academy Awards. <laughs> Talk to you a little bit about what this committee did. Uh, Kit Donahue contacted me back in February, asked if I'd serve on the Hall of Fame nominating committee, or uh, voting committee. And uh, I was floored. I'm very honored to have been on the committee. The IMC took care of soliciting the nominations from the alums. The committee had a broad cross-section, students, faculty, IMC staff, and alums. I was the only radio guy on the committee, so for a little light on radio, I tried. We met in July. The nominations were presented to us. We could have easily elected two to three times the number that we did. But all I want to say is I'm very impressed by the inaugural group of uh, inductees, and uh, I hope that all the students that are here today take a look at uh, those careers, and just keep in mind they were all students here just like you at one time. And the charge is for some of our student staff to go out and become the next generation of Hall of Fame inductees, so that when I'm 82 years old, 30 years from now, one of you will be up here inducting some of your own. Thank you very much. Chuck. 
He nominated him for the Hall of Fame, saying that Chuck's passion, dedication, and commitment to photojournalism has been poured out and soaked up by myself and every student that has graced the halls at Ohio University's Visual Communications Program. Of all of Chuck's awards and legacy and accomplishments, he said his legacy would forever be with the students. On behalf of all the students, both in the classroom and in the newsroom, that have been touched by your life, we thank you, Chuck. Chuck, who was a planner on attending, sent word on Thursday that he is ill and unable to make the trip. Well, let's send out our congratulations to Chuck Scott. The 1960 presidential election brought us the infamous debate between current Vice President Richard Nixon and a young senator from Massachusetts, John Kennedy. As both a print and broadcast journalist, our next inductee has covered every national election since JFK's narrow victory, Al Bruno. Al worked for Newsweek magazine for 18 years before joining ABC News as political director. Al moderated the 1992 vice presidential debate. Al has been an active member of the Alumni Club since its inception and has been very involved and supportive of Alumni Media. About his time as a student here, Al wrote this. I worked on the Daily Alumni for all of my four years in college and it helped shape the course of my life in journalism. It's where I first experienced the challenge and the excitement of being a reporter, the pride of seeing my byline on a front page story, and the satisfaction of knowing that it was a good story. It's also where I felt the fear of seeing a blank piece of paper in my typewriter as I faced a rapidly approaching deadline. When he learned of his induction into the Hall of Fame, Hal wrote that he felt very honored. Hal is currently the chairman of the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation and has been involved in various 9-11 and fire rescue observances throughout the week. He sent his best wishes for the new building as well as the Hall of Fame induction. Congratulations, Hal. Our next inductee dedicated more than 35 years of his life to the College of Communications and to Illini Media, Dick Hildwine. Dick taught photojournalism at the university from 1953 until 1985. He served on the Illini Media Board for 20 years and was interim publisher in 1988. Dick passed away in 1992. Mike Smeltzer, who followed in Dick's footsteps at the university and in Illini Media, had this to say about his mentor. Dick Obelai defined photojournalism on this campus for many years. I learned from Dick as a student in Journalism 291. I learned from Dick when he worked for me when I managed the UPI Bureau in Springfield. I learned that he was a hard act to follow when I succeeded him on the journalism faculty and as IMC publisher. His call and leadership kept the Illini Publishing Company on course throughout the turbulence of the 60s and the 70s. Several of his students are being honored with him here today, and it is truly fitting. I'm just one of the many who can proudly say that he was my teacher, my mentor, and my friend. Please join me in applauding the life of Dick Hillborn. inductee is a longtime fixture in Chicago sports. His voice summoned old Chicago Stadium crowds to their feet, an integral part of that famous roar. Um, but I got an idea for a new uh, television show while I was sitting here. I, I've got to get these previous speakers together and do the Illini Press Comedy Hour. Uh, because these people are real good. Um, I, when, when we talk about uh, working out of basements and uh, you know, inadequate facilities, uh, I can top um, the stories that have been told because I was here in the 50s. And I was in uh, television production at the time, and the uh, the students actually we got our training 
uh, at the Biala Television, which operated under the football stands in the Memorial Stadium. I, I go back that far. Everybody thought the bakery was a big deal when, when that happened. I and mean, that thing was uh, antiquated when we moved into it. And then, um, I don't know that a lot of people around here even know what PGU stands for. It stands for parade, parade ground units. And I actually, uh, when I worked for PGU, we were in the parade ground units. Uh, these dingy old things that they put servicemen in after the Korean War. And that was 1958. Uh, PGU was about four years old at the time. So if you think everything was uh, sort of inadequate, uh, you know, really a, a great appreciation for this facility that you're in. The one good piece of news was, and, and I was also associated with ILL Radio, is we were on the second floor of Greg Hall. And when I was in graduate school, uh, my wife had given birth uh, to my daughter, and I knew everything just wrong. Um, I, I got out of the Marine Corps, she was going to teach school and pay my way through and uh, we tried substitute teaching, and I didn't get the Marines to pay for the kid, I had to pay for it, uh, born here in Champaign-Urbana. And so she'd get a, a, a temp teaching assignment, uh, a, a fill in for the day, and she'd run off, and I'd have to take the kid to class, and, uh, which was not, you know, from, uh, from, which was frowned upon. But at the time, I already was on the second floor of Great Hall. So I'd run by there, and Faye was Frank Schooley's secretary, and I'd leave my kid with Faye, you know, a you know, six-month-old six child, uh, and, and say, Faye, you, you just, you know, I'll change the diapers when, when you get back, just make sure the kid's okay. And I would go off to class, so it wasn't managed to be cramped up there on the second floor. Um, I'm not sure that I belong in this list of people. These are really smart people. There's Pulitzer Prize winners. Um, it, you know, Scotty Reston from the New York Times, Shel Silverstein, guys like this aren't on the list. Uh, maybe they didn't work on the Daily Line. I don't know, but that's pretty good. Uh, my, my congratulations to the other 16 winners, and my congratulations to the people who had the foresight to uh, grab onto a parking lot here and put a four-story building on it and uh, make a real nice facility. And I hope some of the young people that are in the audience today do accomplish what previous speakers have said, which is to be here a few years from now. Um, I've always been um, grateful for the uh, education that I got at the University of Illinois. I hitchhiked over here from Springfield. I uh, was lucky to get in. Wouldn't get in today. I guess they, you know, they're looking for high 10% uh, uh, of that stuff. Um, but um, the one thing I feel good about, and this is Foundation Week, and I serve on the Foundation Board of the University, and uh, we are uh, trying to uh, raise money to uh, make up for the, you know, if the state of Illinois keeps going the way it is, we'll rank down there with Mississippi pretty soon. In terms of support of education, it's uh, really a shame that the legislature um, doesn't support uh, education better than it does in this state. But at any rate, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Um, I, I, I congratulate everybody that had anything to do with this, and I'm uh, honored by this award. And now I apologize uh, to the people who will come and speak here afterwards, but uh, my wife and I are going to run to uh, um, Chicago, and i got to catch a flight to New York. Thank you. Our next inductee is known as Mr. Prep Sports of Chicago for his many years of outstanding coverage of the high school sports scene, Taylor Bell. Taylor covered Chicago sports for the Daily News and Sun-Times and won acclaim for both the Associated Press and United Press International. Bell was inducted into the Chicago Journals of Hall of Fame in 2001. Chris Craven remembers fondly working for Taylor on the Daily Illini sports staff. I first met Taylor in the fall of 1960 when I was a would-be sports reporter for the Daily Illini. As the DI Sports Editor, Taylor was my first newspaper boss. His offbeat sense of humor eased our fledging group of sports reporters into improvement as writers. None of the reporters that worked with him would know he would write a wonderful book on prep sports in Illinois, but those reporters, both male and female, were aware that Taylor helped them in a way that today is called mentoring. 
His success and his selection to the Illini Media Hall of Fame are not a surprise to any of us. Congratulations, Taylor Bell. See, I attended yesterday afternoon's football game, uh, and uh, I can't remember. I left at the end of the third quarter today, round. <laughs> First of all, I want to express my gratitude and thanks to Mary Corey, and Tom Costello, and Kit Donahue, and anyone else, everyone else, who's been responsible for organizing this wonderful, wonderful event this weekend. I've had the opportunity to be on campus since early Friday afternoon and, and take a tour of the, this wonderful facility and walk the campus and quadrangle and do uh, acquaintance with old friends. I want to congratulate all of the other inductees. This is an overwhelming and humbling honor. And I look at the list and I know there are a lot of heavy hitters in this lineup, and I sort of feel like Bob Buecher batting behind Ruth, Gehrig, and Lazari. Just a sidebar, I kind of said to leave, but I asked Kip the other day how they were going to handle this. Were you going to go alphabetical order? Balls, Bolt, Ray, Bell? Or were you, you know, and she said, no, we're going to go chronological. And I said, well, wait a minute, who's the oldest person here? God, is there anybody older than me? Well, Memory is still there a little bit. I was a sophomore on the day of the LII in 1959-60, covering the Illinois basketball team. And as the picture on the, uh, on the wall indicated, Dennis Swanson was the senior manager of that basketball team. So I got him by a couple of years. And I remember later, and we talking earlier this uh, this afternoon before the brunch. I recall in 1973, I was covering professional golf for the Chicago Daily News, and I was uh, at the U.S. Open at Oldmont in Pennsylvania, where Johnny Miller shot his historic 63 in the last round of win. And I ran into Dennis again, and at that time he was representing a new telecommunications company and selling some kind of a newfangled machine that he claimed was the beginning of cyberspace, and I guess was actually the beginning of CNN, but what did I know? Because I'm still learning how to click on and click off. But I can honestly say, as others have said, uh, as Roger and Marsh have said, and I've said it to hundreds of high school and college students that I've talked to over the last several years, that if I have achieved anything in this business over the last 40 years, it's all because of what I learned and experienced in the basement of Illini Hall. Working for four years at the Daily Illini, hot type, teletype machines, typewriters, Orville Moore, midnight meals at the title house with the chuck wagon or Mel Roots, getting the paper off the press, with ink on your hands at two o'clock in the morning, and then starting the whole, getting a couple hours sleep and starting the whole cycle all over again. Uh, Chris Craven is here, Chuck Kirshner, my editor, the editor in chief of the paper when I was a junior, Wade Freeman, who was editor when I was a senior, was here yesterday. They know what we're talking about, they experience the same things, they remember it all. My wife Gail is here today, and as you journalists know, without the support, the wife who understands what you're doing and understands deadlines and late phone calls and stuff, this, this kind of job is impossible. And I want to credit my mother too, she's here. And I want her to know that I recall how she, as a journalism major and graduate of the University of Illinois in 1939, that Ilio book that was at the auction had her picture in it, uh, told me about the DI when I was trying to figure out what college I wanted to attend after graduating high school. But she never told me 
that I needed to have good grades to get into journalism school. So I majored in DI for four years. It was an invaluable experience, one that I've never regretted, learning to make contacts and meet uh, new people and how to work under the pressure of a deadline with Orville Moore and his ever-present cigar chomping at his mouth, peeking around the corner. I mean, you didn't have to, you didn't have to satisfy people like Kirshner or Freeman or any of the others. You had to satisfy Orville they were out of a job. So it helped me, I believe, to get me here today. I thank you very much for this wonderful honor. Our next inductees, zeal for and knowledge of film, earned him a 1975 Pulitzer Prize for film criticism, and his work as a critic in print and television has made him an American icon, Roger Ebert. Sometimes film critic Roger is best known for his syndicated column and weekly television program. In addition, he is a best-selling author, lecturer, and adjunct professor. Here in his hometown of Urbana, he hosts Roger Ebert's Overlooked Film Festival each spring. Before Ebert's professional achievements brought him international acclaim, he was admired, respected, and loved by students who had the good fortune to work with him here. Bill Knapp, who was sports editor under Ebert, wrote, Of all the people who worked at the Daily Illini in the early 1960s, none brought Roger's energy, intellect, and unbridled enthusiasm to the often difficult and always demanding job of putting out a paper five days a week. Of course, it was certainly no surprise to anybody who saw the young men at work that he was destined to make a large mark in the world of daily journalism. Today, with that Pulitzer in film criticism hanging on his wall, he remains as lively, energetic, and engaging as ever on the printed page, and he is still up to his most celebrated old tricks. Not only is he the best, not only is he the best raconteur and joke teller around, but he's as fast on deadline as ever. Due to health issues, Roger is unable to attend today. We sent our heartfelt congratulations and wishes for a speedy recovery to Roger and give him a big thumbs up. A senior writer for Sports Illustrated for 23 years, our next inductee originally gained acclaim for exposing a dirty and dangerous practice in horse racing, Bill Knapp. Bill Knapp, who retired from Sports Illustrated in 2001, has won numerous awards for his stories on boxing and horse racing and wrote the definitive book on Secretariat. As the sports editor of the Daily Illini, Bill earned the respect of Roger Ebert, Roger nominated him for the Hall of Fame. Bill says he learned the fundamentals of being a journalist at the Daily Illini. He wrote, I never had a greater or more fulfilling educational experience in my years at the university than I had working at the Daily Illini. There I learned the rudiments of the craft of journalism, how to report a story, how to interview subjects, how to fit the blocks of information into a tight, organized story and how to perform all of these essential tasks while facing real deadlines with linotype operators waiting for the copy in the back shop. It was both priceless as a learning experience and simply unforgettable as the first adventure into the practice of the craft. Bill is still up against several deadlines and could not attend this weekend, but he wrote that he is appreciated of the honor of being included in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Bill Mack. As a leader in the newspaper industry for more than two decades, our next, our next inductee served as the top editor of two Metro newspapers, Larry Bray. Larry is a former national president of Associated Press Managing Editors and was editor of the Journal News in Westchester County, New York, and of the Cincinnati Inquirer. Since the year 2000, Bray has been executive editor of Time Shamrock Communications in Scranton, Pennsylvania. No era dominated our Hall of Fame like the first half of the 1960s, 
Roger Ebert, Bill Knapp, and Larry served consecutively as editors-in-chief of the Daily Illini. Dave Reed, who worked with all three, nominated Larry, saying that he achieved an equally distinguished record of service to both the DI and to journalism. His dedication to and enthusiasm for the DI during his four years at Illinois has been echoed in his journalism career. The DI has produced dozens of great journalists over the last century, none finer than Larry, who continues to represent all of us, or continues to represent us with excellence. Congratulations, Larry Bray. Gave money to recruit student athletes. 
And because of Dan's stories, both the uh, football coach and basketball coach were forced to resign, making Dan the most hated person on campus. <laughs> well, this did not stop him from becoming editor. More important than any of his achievements, however, is the fact that he was my editor in college and gave me my first byline. Dan Walls, who taught me everything I know, but certainly not everything he knows. He is an outstanding journalist, a wonderful person, and a great friend. Congratulations, Dan Walls. Company, 
Paul was a reporter and bureau chief before taking on major management responsibilities. Today, Paul is vice president of new strategy for Dow Jones. The Daily Illini was fortunate to have not just one, but two boys from the Ingracia family pass through the doors of Illini Hall in the early 1970s. Larry writes about his brother. I will always remember a day in March 1993 when a colleague told me that my brother Paul was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize. I immediately called Paul and was amazed to find out that he hadn't heard. But I was even more amazed by his reaction, which was something along the lines of, so? <laughs> of course, when Paul and one of his colleagues won the Pulitzer that year for beat reporting, he was excited. But actually less excited than on days when he nailed a major exclusive. With Paul, it's the journalism that matters. In a business where people increasingly have, are too consumed with themselves and winning prizes, the most important of the many things I learned from my brother is that it isn't about us. It's about the stories. It's about informing and touching readers so that they can make knowledgeable decisions as citizens. That's the highest public service we can perform. Congratulations, Paul and Russell. Say that you know, um, the day I remember the day after the Pulitzer were announced back in 1993. Um, one of our sons, uh, Susie, my son Charlie, who was in junior high school, Charlie went to school the next day and told his teacher his dad just won the Pulitzer surprise. <laughs> and he had about right, and this is also quite in that week as a wonderful. Surprise! Charlie actually just graduated from Illinois Law School uh, in May, uh, and it was a thrill for Susie and me to be there. You know, the, uh, I have a couple of favorite sayings in life. Um, one of them is, um, uh, "You can only be young once, but you can always be immature." <laughs> and by that, I really think, you know, no matter how old we get and what we do, we ought to really look at life and look at relationships and look at uh, our profession with a sort of a childlike wonder, which I think is it's always a journey of discovery. And I remember um, back in my days of the Daily Illini that um, I really hero worshiped, honestly. I know you guys have find it hard to believe. People like Carl Schwartz, uh, my uh, predecessor as editor of the paper, uh, Roger and Marsha and Dan Balls. And the truth is, I especially still hero worship them today, so it's great to be here with you guys. And my other favorite saying is, um, you can always tell skill from luck by its duration. Just think about that for a minute. It really is true, and it's really what uh, Lanai Publishing Company and Lanai Media Company, as it's now called, is all about. It's an institution that has existed for uh, well over a century. Uh, it is done up because of really the skill and the dedication, not the luck, but the skill and the dedication of so many people, including, including the current group, uh, Mary, Kit, uh, the others, Tom, who are really uh, the trustees of this wonderful uh, institution going forward. And just finally, uh, it's really truly an honor to, to have my dear brother with me uh, today. He is um, a wonderful person, and really the truth is he is the best journalist I know. Thank you. Our next inductee was named Business and Financial Editor of the New York Times in 2004. Paul's brother, Larry Gresson. Larry worked for the Sun Times before a distinguished 26 years at the Wall Street Journal. One good turn deserves another, who better to speak about Larry than Paul. On September 11th, 2001, Larry was an editor of the Wall Street Journal and was a block away from the World Trade Center at 8.45 a.m. He was walking to the journal's office, kitty corner from the Trade Center when the attack began. Over the ensuing hours, Larry made his way to the paper's printing plant in Princeton, New Jersey, some 50 miles away, and began editing stories for the next day's paper. Larry's courage, skill, and dedication played a critical role in getting the paper out that night, even though the journal, alone among many major papers, was literally bombed out of its office. The journal won the Pulitzer Prize for public service for that heroic effort, 
He is admired by all of his colleagues and dearly loved by his brother Paul, who, like many others in the journal, wishes he was still there. Congratulations, Larry Grazia. Her 
Paula says the virus. To much of the world, journalist Iris Chang was admired as the best as a best-selling author, whose 1997 book, The Rape of Man King, was translated in over to a dozen languages. The book also went on to become a symbol to Asians everywhere about the importance of remembering history from that era, no matter how painful and no matter how difficult. But to those of us who knew her personally, as a friend and colleague of the Daily Illini, she was even more. She would also serve as a constant source of inspiration. Inspiration to always do your best, to think big, to follow a quest for social justice, to dig a little deeper than for the facts than anyone else on the story, and to uphold the highest ethical standards of journalism. These weren't just lofty ideals she talked about, she lived them and made herself the best teacher to others through her actions. Please join me in applauding the life of Irish Chan. for letting us share in your day of honor. It really is an honor for us. Uh, we're delighted to be a part of this. And, uh, I've, had, I've had a lot of fun. I think that, and, and those of you who, well, you know, if you sat in our board meetings, some have accused me of not taking my role as seriously as I ought to on occasion. The students' managers keep rolling their eyes. Our chair, Susan Cohen, it, it's like, I feel like a little kid because I'm reprimanded at virtually every board. <laughs> For those of you who as part of the uh, tour that have not seen it, I want to direct you to get an opportunity. There's a white beam right here above us. And if you get a chance, you get to see, you know, we are still dancing once in a while because we had everybody sign that beam the day we rolled, rolled that beam up there. So if you get a chance, you take a look at the beam. There's a, there's here, some person was here yesterday, about an hour and a half looking for his name. But I, I, I DI person, of course. But I can see how that goes. I, I have a couple of thank yous and then we're going to wrap it up. First of all, uh, I want to thank our, my fellow board members who, quite frankly, are far more intellectual than I could ever hope to be. And uh, well, Eli, at Gates, you know it's true, but thank you. Uh, you know, I have, I, I have the opportunity to serve with it. Business professors and journalism professors, some wonderful students. And here's some guy that's been teaching speech time who, if you're Irish and from the south side of Chicago, comes naturally anyway. So I never really had to work too hard. I'd like to ask our board to please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> and at least one of them is looking for a job, so. I also would ask at this point, for those people that were not inducted, can I ask the honor, uh, our, our alumni that came back and helped us with the celebration, would you rise and let us give them a round of applause, please? Besides, the stretching will be with all our alumni. Thank you. Now, again, some of you can really understand this. We know you're getting old, but Jean came up to me at, at a previous meeting and reminded me that I was her instructor way back when. And you know, after you go through a few students, once in a while you don't remember all of them, so they remind you. Uh, the most important thing, Jean, thing that Jean can remind me of is the fact that I let her out of class was to shoot the Illinois Arizona game. So, so at least I had my priorities right in those days. <laughs> uh, I wanted to recognize our students. From all of our units, and from all the students that are here, please stand up. I want to recognize you real quick. They have done a wonderful job in helping us 
get this taken care of. And I hope, I know some of them have been absolutely thrilled being able to be your escorts. Those of you that were being honored this weekend, they were, I think, I don't, I'm glad I wasn't in the discussion of who got who got who. And finally, and, and uh, certainly the people that make us all look good, is I want to ask the IMC professional staff, our full timers, as some of us, would you please stand up to the absolute superb job? We all know there's nothing better than having a great staff to make you look good and then you take all the credit. So they've been wonderful about that. Uh, some time ago, uh, I listened to a bunch senior give a talk about some people that had come before and said, you know, what you need to do, you need to always take with you the memories. And we certainly have plenty of that today. People taking with them the memories. There's really nothing better than that. Tell the stories. Because you come back, you get to tell the story. And that's one of the really neat things about coming back together. And as we go back and talk about what happened in the seven, and how much we spent time in the basement of, oh, by the way, I want to talk about Weston Hall for what right the morning. I'll speak to you guys. But you know, we have Weston Hall and we have Lionel Hall. This company has spent a lot of time in the basement. <laughs> we really have. Folks, we're out of the basement. <laughs> And I now figure out why Mary was so adamant in the fact that this building would not have a basement. <laughs> I thought it was a money issue. It wasn't. It was all about not being in the basement. <laughs> I want for a moment, just for a very brief moment, for us to realize that I think there's a difference between memories and legacy. Memories are the wonderful stories that we tell, but legacy, to my mind, are the people that we touch. And as I look around this room and the opportunity, that not simply the building, because the building is a building, but the people that we touch in that which we do is the single most important accomplishment that each of us can have. And for that, if this building furthers that opportunity, if it gives us a chance to increase our ability to touch lives, then in fact, we've done exactly what we need to do. I was joking with Dennis Swanson, I said, you know, Dennis, at least in what I've done for this company, I could die tomorrow. I'm a happy guy. I'm in pretty good shape. You know, yeah, I thought it was a little weird too. But you know what? We're so proud of this. And it could have been done without the help of all the folks that are in this room. And I'm not saying that to make people feel good. I'm telling you that because it's fact. And I'm absolutely delighted that you're able to share this uh, with, with us. Uh, and no matter what you and you're from, I want you to please promise me that in your heart you will realize that you can always come home. This is our new home, and you are always invited. It's an open house, and you know what? We won't consider you the brother-in-law that stayed too long. Come on in here and stay at your new home. This is your place. Now, finally, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an event if somebody didn't put the hit on somebody. I'm supposed to do this very delicately, but I just going to tell you that we're going to have a fundraising campaign. That was the third leg of the school. We had three things we had to do. First of all, we had to get the building built on time and under budget. And as someone who spent his life in government, incredibly enough, it took me a private company to finally get that done. <laughs> and I can tell you, our board was indispensable in kind of going over that thing. Are you sure this is what you want? And, and, and Mary would bring it in, and we massage it, and we got it done. The second thing, I, you know, I was so far back, she was not even a chance to hear you. We sold the building on Green Street, and that was the second leg. <laughs> Actually, I think Chuck Tanner is out there looking at that building right now. Are you my alum? Isn't he still in space? Based on that slideshow, I think that's where it was. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. And finally, the third leg of the stool was some level of fundraising. So I, I'm going to really quickly ask you that, yeah, there's probably going to be an envelope coming, and if you know a foundation that wants to help us with that, please, we would encourage you to do that. 
The last thing in the world this is to do is to raise money. The first thing you do is to honor you. But I want to warn you because one quick story before we close it out. Many years ago, I used to get an envelope from my high school in Chicago, St. Ignatius High School. I get envelopes in October every year. You just knew you were going to pay. Just, and I got the envelope and I threw it aside. And I said, you know, I could go early this year for my December contribution. And finally, about four or five weeks later, my wife said, what is this? And she opened it up. And she said, I don't know if you know this, but next week you're supposed to receive an award from St. Ignatius High School. Now, for those of you who are already in the Hall of Fame, know that envelope is not another award. Just want to let you know. On behalf of the board, the staff, and the students at the Alliance Media Company, again, thank you for sharing. Please realize you're always welcome home. God bless you. The end. <laughs>